All right, today you're going to be learning about Dar al-Islam during the post-classical era, and that would be the abode of Islam. Um, I'm going to start by simplifying this, and um, this isn't exactly what Islam is, but, you know, the abode of Islam was a, a shared cultural community for people to travel in between um, during the post-classical era and beyond. Uh, one way of understanding this, uh, and I know I'm teaching this to an AP um, high school level for AP World, um, maybe this would blend with you more. Maybe it's like, you know, your social media world today. Um, your friends, you have sh shared common interests, right? I mean, like right here, I'm going to click into my Facebook, right? And when this ever pops up, right, my news feed are friends across the world who I share images with, who I share ideas with. If I don't like that one, well, then let's uh, move to the another media one, Instagram, right? I I'm sharing things with people across the world, the common cultures. Um, I'm not saying Dar al Islam was a shared common culture like social media, but it is a concept where people have a common language, a shared common vision um, based on Islam and its practices. So let's go through the screencast, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, um, so here we are. We're looking at Dar al Salaam. This is an old map that was made during the post classical era. It's kind of a uh, skewed. Uh, right here, you can see where they have right, the Arabian Peninsula, um, Trans Saharan trade routes running through Africa. And then over here, you have Europe, right? And over here, you would have the Silk Roads into East and South Asia. Um, well, let us move in to uh, a couple things and see where this is going to take us. All right, so the spread of Islam. Um, here is pretty color coded. I think it's easy to understand, right? You have the initial start with Muhammad from 622 to 632, taking the area that is color coded red, which is on the Arabian Peninsula down here. After that, right, you, you have the four caliphs uh, before the Umayyad, and this expansion, right, pretty much takes like this area where we have the orange. Uh, notice it is moving out of the Arabian Peninsula. They're into the Sassanid, they're into the Ptolemaic Egypt, and they're knocking on the Byzantines. Uh, well, under right the Umayyad, which is green areas which are at it, which would be over to North Africa and the Iberian Peninsula and more of what was known as Persia, but into India at this time. You have its expansion over 130 years. That's pretty big. To go that far that fast, I mean, at that time period. Uh, but it, it's under the caliphate, right? And after the Umayyad, you get the Abbasid, which kind of stays the same. You don't, you don't have any real growth past that. Well, things happen uh, during this time. And what happens during this time is you're starting to get Afro-Eurasian trade routes. Um, blue in this is symbolizing the maritime, and then the brown is symbolizing when you're going through and looking at the land trade routes. Notice over here where you're getting this movement of Africa through the Trans-Saharan trade routes in the Mediterranean Basin. You have a trade of gold from Sub-Saharan Africa into the Umayyad controlled regions of the Mediterranean and North Africa, which brings them into this world of trade. Notice the Silk Roads are still going and you have the maritime routes. Well, a prime example of Dar al-Islam and looking at this would be people who travel these trade routes. Now I'm going to take you to another slide, and that would be the trade routes of Ibn Battuato, which is towards the latter part of the classical era. Um, it is broken down here. You could see, right, Ibn started over here, right? He went, ended up, right, went all the way down into Asia and then returned. Obviously, it's not the correct path. But he's traveling through this road and these maritime routes on places, but they're, they're trade venues. You notice, right, if we go back, right, on this slide, and we draw that same thing in, he is basically following trade routes of the time. Well, who's trading during this time? Well, of course, everyone's trading, but you have Islam, and it's, it's a growing, right, Dar al-Islam is growing through Afro Eurasia. Well, when he follows this, right, you can get this idea of this map, which I would like you to do later on this map, is you can cue in on each stage and read where he went. So during the period or during this lesson, please go into this graphic. I will post the URL, but it is right up here. You can see it. Uh, 
and moving forward. Uh, Dar al Islam, right, it was a very uh, powerful movement of culture. The Ben Batua to utilize this culture to travel throughout. Um, hopefully, this has helped you on a demonstration on what Dar al Islam has been. Thank you. One more thing I would like to add, sorry, this is like, you know, the encore, the after, is um, even after Ibn Batuatu, um, you have an expansion of Islam that even goes farther right up to the end of, right, uh, the post-classical era into the early modern era. You have regions which are drawn into this, which are converting, such as sub-Saharan Africa over here. You have up into Central Asia over here, South Asia added in, right, and parts of, right, what is now, right, East Africa. Um, so these areas are moving into the expansive realm of Islam, which would then also, in trade, right, create the expansive realm of Dar al-Islam um, across the Afro-Eurasian Ecumene during the post-classical era. Uh, so Dar al-Islam, the abode of Islam, is alive and well, and that is it.